Hey, Dusk the Viking here. Welcome to my Phasmophobia Beginner's Guide, I guess. I'm going to focus this guide at the lower tier stuff because uh, new players aren't going to have access to the more expensive equipment that you have to level up to get. And that equipment is more geared for the bigger maps. Anyway, some of the smaller houses, you really just don't need it in. It can be helpful if you're playing solo, but if you've got a team or some friends playing with you, it's a huge help. But we're going to take some basic gear and we're going to do a Tanglewood house, which is the same house the tutorial takes place in. And I'm just going to walk you through how to use your items and uh, how to navigate around the house and how to not get murdered mer mercilessly in the middle of the night by a demon. Anyway, let's go ahead and hop in here and we'll get started. Alright, so the uh, first thing we're going to look at is what we should take. Again, you're not going to have a whole lot of stuff unlocked. Uh, what am I sitting at? I'm a level 26, but you're probably going to be like level 1 or 2. So what you're going to want to focus on is salt and smudge sticks. It's cheap and uh, also a lighter because the smudge sticks don't work if you don't have a lighter. If there's uh, more than one of you, having a backup flashlight is really handy so that everybody has their own flashlight. So I have all the free starting stuff. I've taken two additional salts, uh, two smudge sticks, and a lighter. And so that's all we're going to bring with us, and I will explain how to use all this stuff during the mission. So let's, uh, let's get started. We're doing an amateur Tanglewood Street House solo. I've got nothing else to report, unfortunately. Okay, so in this one, he has nothing else to report. We have no idea if this is a violent ghost, uh, so we're going in super blind. Donna Thomas, the ghost seems to only respond to people who are alone. Not a problem, because we're always going to be alone. Find evidence uh, with the EMF reader. That's good, because we'll have one. Detect the ghost presence with a motion sensor. Obviously, we're not going to have one, especially if you're newer, so don't worry about it. And capture a photo of dirty water in a sink. Capturing dirty water can be really hit or miss. Sometimes um, the ghosts will get preoccupied with doing other things, and they just won't get around to messing with the sink. So this one uh, um, you sometimes really have to commit to, and sometimes you get it really easily. So it's just kind of touch and go. All right, the first thing we want to do is get a camera set up. The second thing we want to do is get our flashlight. And third is get some salt down. Now I've got two things of salt, so the first one I'm just going to throw around here in the hallway. Now eventually you might come up with some uh, strategies on your own about how you want to utilize the salt. But for me, I just want to make sure that the hallway here is relatively safe. You only get three charges, so... Well, we've already got activity. That spooked me. I am spooked. I don't know which door it was. Let's get this light on. And for now, we're going to set our camera. F fuck. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I'm already pretty fucking spooked. We've got... I I've done almost nothing, and this ghost is pretty active. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, so this might be, right off the bat, pretty dangerous, right? So what do we have here? Uh, now this is amateurs, so I've got a timer that will help keep my sanity high. Uh, my sanity won't really drop till that timer is low, which will prevent the ghost attacks from happening. But we're gonna go ahead and get the lighter in there. I'm gonna go ahead and get our lighter lit. I'm gonna go ahead and get that. The lighter I'm going to keep on me, the EMF, let's go ahead and see. It was right here, that door. Salt hasn't been stepped in yet, but that's definitely where we're going to be at. I'm going to go ahead and throw the EMF on the floor. Already got activity, it's trying to come out of the room, or it's touching that door. The EMF gives you feedback when you get it near something that the ghost is interacted with. It interacted with the door, and it seems like it's going to continue to interact with the door. 
So that's where it's going to be. I've got a little bit of time left. Our sanity is still fine, so I don't think I'm going to be in trouble. So let's get some other tools here. I'm going to ditch the lighter for now, but we're going to need those smudge sticks. I'll explain what those are. We don't really need the salt because we already know where the ghost is. The salt is just to help track. Now, since we know that we have a ghost presence in that bathroom, what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, F to place the book. And we're going to get checking for fingerprints on the door. If I had a crucifix, I would definitely drop it in this room. I don't see handprints or fingerprints. I'm going to turn the light off for just a second. Nothing in there. I'm going to go ahead and get a camera set up in here because I want to check for ghost orbs. That is a fantastic spot. We're going to go ahead and close the door. It does not like that door closed. What do we have on the EMF already? That's a 5 on EMF. That is super aggressive. Let's go ahead and check for ghost orbs and then we'll come back in and check for writing. Wow, a 5 just like that. I believe I am dealing with a really dangerous ghost right now. Didn't get any fingerprints, but they could show up later. Although it was definitely interacting with the door, so I think I would have seen fingerprints if there were going to be fingerprints. That camera was on, so it's, it's either turned off the camera or we have a bug, one of the two. Alright, we can see that we've got some pretty hard activity right there. First thing we want to do is get into our journal, and we're going to go ahead and log that this is EMF 5. Let's go ahead and get our, our smudge stick. Oh, I've already got one, right. Okay, so this is how the smudge sticks work. We're going to get our lighter. Now I just have, have to press F to light the smudge stick. And what we're going to do is we're going to save this for a ghost attack. If our flashlight, you have to keep your flashlight on, if our shoulder-mounted flashlight starts to flicker, then a ghost hunt is starting, which means it's going to manifest and try and kill us. When that happens, I'm going to press F on my keyboard, and that will light these smudge sticks. If you're in VR, you just light them, I guess, however that works. Uh, and that will stop the ghost hunt, but then the smudge sticks will be used up. Can't run, so we have ghost riding. Still good. So I'm going to come out here to check in my journal because I don't want to get caught off guard by anything. I want to keep my sanity up. Sanity is a big deal. That's what feeds the ghost is lowering sanity. Let's say there were four team members. You would want to look at your average sanity. And then that's going to give you an idea of how much power you're feeding to this uh, this ghost. Well, So let's go ahead and enter the second thing. We have uh, ghost writing. That's going to narrow it down to Revenant, Shade, and Oni. So let's see what, um, what else. Is the Spirit Box one? Yes, a Spirit Box would be an Oni. Fingerprints would be a Revenant. Ghost Orb would be a Shade. So I need to check for the Ghost Orbs. And then we'll need to check for Spirit Box. I think those will be the two things. I feel like we've already ruled out Fingerprints, but we might come back to it. Again, I've got my uh, I've got my smudge sticks ready. So we're gonna see if there's dirty water in that bathroom. If not, we'll turn it on. Man, this thing is that door is all the way open. I'm gonna turn the lights on here. This thing's got me spooked a little. I'm like. Clean water so far. I try to click on the camera. Let's see if that turned the camera on. I don't really need the lights on out here. Did it lock the door? Fucking hell, dude. I could hear it walking behind me. God damn this game. <laughs> Let's see if I got the camera turned on. There we go. We finally got the camera on. Is the light on? Maybe we'll get lucky and it'll just turn the light off for us, right? 
I honestly don't think we're going to see ghost orbs. All right, so we're going to have to do a risky maneuver. We're going to do a risky maneuver. Well, we're not going to do a risky maneuver. I've got two smudge sticks. I'm going to go in and light this smudge stick to um, cleanse the area and go ahead and try and nullify the ghost a bit. And then we're going to go get the spirit box and throw it in there. And it should be pressing F. And there it's smoking. We're going to throw that in there. And we're going to get the fuck out. Immediately, uh, as soon as I lit that, it started opening doors. I may have drove it out of the room. I may not be safe. I do not know here. Are you here? Yes. That's all we needed. He said close. And I believe it. <laughs> Alright, so we know that we're dealing with an Oni. We kind of knew we were dealing with an Oni right, uh, right off the bat. I didn't see that we were going to get any dirty water. Uh, we did detect the paranormal activity with the MF reader. We don't have a motion sensor. So this is about as good as it's going to get. Uh, we're out of smudge sticks. It's just not safe anymore. So we're going to go ahead... And we're going to hit that for the spirit box. That's going to give us some Oni. And we're going to complete this successfully. Alright, there we got an Oni. And uh, we made 30 bucks. That was definitely a dangerous one. Uh, but it was an interesting one and it was fun. Let me give you a couple of tips really quick. Or at least some things that I like to do. One, I like to set up cameras first. In your first walkthrough to set up a camera, if you don't hear or get a clue to activity, then I just like to set up the camera in a big room or a big hallway and try and capture as much area as possible. The second thing is to get some kind of tracking out and that is to watch for cold breath while you walk around with the EMF scanner and try and sweep the area. And then look for and listen for clues with stuff. Then at some point once your timer gets down you know you're gonna need to think about safety and that's where salt can help. You can either use salt to track or you can use salt to verify that an area might be safe. For example, in that last one, if we hadn't heard any activity in that bathroom, I might have set salt in the bathroom, outside the bathroom, and then out in the hall, and then swept the bathroom really good with the EMF scanner. That would have let me know that the bathroom might be a good hiding spot during the hunt if the ghost manifests, and I have hidden that bathroom before. <laughs> If you still haven't got a sign, try talking to the spirit. Hold your proximity voice chat down and ask the ghost. Say, give me a sign. A lot of times this will prompt the ghost to flicker a light, uh, open or shut a door, something like that, and then that can give you a clue on the area. Then you can try and sweep with the EMF. You can look for breath. And once you verify a presence, move your camera to that location, get your black light scanner, uh, check doors, ask the spirit to open or shut a door. That can put some handprints on the door, and these will help you verify the things. And most importantly, work quickly and efficiently. Once you verify something, like if it says something on a spirit box, you're done with the spirit box. Don't sit there and keep talking to it. Uh, because you're just allowing your sanity to lower and lower and the chances of hunts get higher and higher. So find your evidence, verify it, and then move on to your next target or objective. Look at your optional objectives and try and get those done as well. If you can't identify the ghost, maybe you can get something else done. Like if I couldn't figure out it was an Oni, but I got the, uh, the dirty water, take a picture of the dirty water and it's like, well, if you're struggling and you think maybe you're you're gonna get killed, you know, pack up and head out and, and uh, you know, just consider a good practice, right? So hopefully those are a few tips that'll get you going in the right direction and help you figure out how to navigate the game. Anyway, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the guide and I hope it was helpful. If so, let me know in the comments or if I missed something or if you have any questions, let me know and I'll see if I can answer them. Thanks and we'll catch you in the next video. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot. I really appreciate it. Thanks.